Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us ahead of another busy Ashes summer. Now, you're branching out this year, taking your partnership with Jeffrey Boycott out of the commentary box and onto the stage for a series of very special Aggers and Boycott shows. It sounds fantastic. Tell us more. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, with some trepidation, obviously. Um, but, I mean, Jeffrey and I are the odd couple, really, aren't we, I suppose? I mean, people are always a bit surprised uh, to hear us together, I think. We, we couldn't be more, more different, really. And yet... Uh, we sort of love each other, really. You know, there's a great respect there. Um, and he and I do get on very well. I, I tease him dreadfully. I mean, how he lets me get away with some of it, I, I just don't know. Um, but I, I, I mean, I admire him enormously. I always have done. Uh, and I think probably that respect on both parts goes back to when we played, actually. I know he's not very respectful of my playing career now. Um, but I used to be okay. I used to get him out a few times. And we used to have, actually, we used to have quite a good battle. And that's what I think he remembers, I mean, although he was getting on a bit when I played against him. I was just a young pup, really. But I've always respected him. I mean, as a, as a, as a county cricketer, when you were playing against Jeffrey Boycott, uh, that was the ultimate challenge. And if you got him out, well, you had got him out. And although he won't have it, I did get out a number of times. And I found another one the other day, too, which I've got to remind you about. And, um, and on we go. And I mean, it'll be a, a sort of an extension, I suppose, of our podcast, which is um, part reflective, part war. <laughs> um, there'll be a chance for people, of course, to play Boycott Bingo, which is very much his own creation that we've managed to get. I think, I think all of his usual sayings together, that'll be in the, in the brochure. And we're going to have guests on as well. I mean, Stephen Fry is, is at London. Uh, Tomo's coming up to, to Nottingham to tell about bowling at Jeffrey Boycott and 74, 75 in that terror series. Of course, Jeffrey bottled out of that one, didn't he? Um, but you know what I mean. Uh, so it's going it's to be live, it's going to be fun, uh, and, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So how did this all come about? There's quite a lot of cricket stuff going on, actually, because thankfully, I mean, cricket at the moment is very popular, um, which, which is a good thing. I mean, I, I worry a bit about the future and the exposure um, and whether there's enough, obviously, that, that kids can see now. Um, but at the moment, with England playing well, um, and the Ashes, of course, very much putting it in the public eye, then, 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 then cricket is in. So for those of us who make a living out of cricket, then it's, uh, it's, it's good. So there are four shows in all, starting off in London on the 1st of July, Nottingham three days later, really sort of adding something to the Ashes build-up and getting people in the mood for the series, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, if, if they need it. I mean, I'm, I'm local to Nottingham, you are obviously, and so you'll know. I mean, it's gripped, it's amazing. Um, for Nottingham to have the first test, with all this hype and all this build-up and, and excitement, I mean, the place is going to be full of Australians for us to heart. Uh, we'll make them welcome, but not too welcome, I hope. Um, and so I, just, I don't think people really need the revving up for the ashes. Although um, some one or two crusty people like me perhaps have, have questioned there being too much ashes stuff going on, back-to-back -back ashes and so on. Actually, I, I think at the moment the public don't mind. Um, I wouldn't like to have it done again, back-to-back -back ashes. Because tickets are expensive, there's lots of other stuff going on. Um, and the Ashes has to remain special, rather like the Lions Tour. You know, every four years, it, it is special, and, and the Ashes should be special. So I wouldn't want it to be overdone. Um, but at the moment, hey, you, you can't get a ticket, so, so clearly it's, it, it's all right, isn't it? I understand you're going to have some very special guests for the shows. Jeff Thompson's going to be in Nottingham, Stephen Fry's coming along as well. That must be really exciting. Yeah, and Stephen is, is a good mate of mine, and he loves cricket. Um, we were at the same school together, um, we were supposed to be in there at the same time, but he was expelled now before I got there. Um, but he's a good friend, and uh, I'm just really chuffed he's coming because uh, you know he 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 just he, he loves cricket for a start. Um, we had a little text exchange yesterday. I said, "Come on, let's give boycott some stick," and he said, "Yeah, you betcha." You know, so he, he's going to be poor old Jeff is going to be horribly outgunned. Um, and Tomo is just Tomo. I mean, Tomo. People people often get the wrong idea of Tomo. They they, they see the cricketer, the, the the devastating fast bowler who who supposedly used to like hitting people. Well, that's not true at all. Tomo is is the gentlest man. Uh, chaotic. Um, I hope he turns up. <laughs> he should do. Um, but that's Tomo. And he, he, he never swore at anybody. He used to swear at himself. Uh, if he wasn't bowling very well, he'd have muttered at himself. But he, he never he never staged at people. Yeah, that, that wasn't Tomo. They, they built up this this enormous character, you know, just a sort of wild animal you know, off, 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 the, off the beach somewhere in North Queensland, you know, sort of pig wrestling. It's nonsense. That's not Tomo at all. Yes, he's a, he, he's a, a Queenslander. He's a, he's a country boy. He loves his fishing. Um, but he's, he's a, a, a delight. He'll, he'll, he'll be fun. He'll definitely get stuck into Jeffrey.
And are there any other special guests coming along as, as the series goes on? Well, we're not sure yet. I mean, I think, I think Steve Harmison's going up to Durham. Um, trying to get Jimmy Anderson and people up at Manchester. It all depends really on how the Ashes are going, I think. So it's, it's, the nice thing about it is it's flexible. I mean, we can just you know, see what comes. So this is something of a unique opportunity to see these cricketers and entertainers talking about cricket in the same place because it, it might not happen again. No, it might not. I, mean, I don't know if we ever will do these again. Um, you know, Jeffrey's 72, 73 now. He's not a young man. I mean, he's remarkably fit for, for what he's been through and he loves, he loves this sort of thing. But you just don't know what's around the corner. I'd like to think we could do some more. I'd like to think we could take it off to other parts of the country. Leeds for a start, and where he's where he's from, for goodness sake, I mean, we haven't had a chance to get that in. So, hopefully, this this will um, you know, tempt him into doing doing some more. So, what sort of things can people expect to see and enjoy when they come along to the shows? Well, it'll be it'll be Jeffrey's anecdotes, really. Um, me me getting stuck into him, of course, but answering some questions, you know, answering why he. I, I joked about Tom O seventy four five. Why wasn't he there? You know, it's one of the most talked about. Con controversies of the 70s you know our, our finest player where was he you know was he ducking behind the sofa I don't know about that when he did poor old Derek Randall here at, at Nottingham ran him out by miles you know on, on, on his return horrible you know the local hero um, you know there's lots of things with Jeffrey to, to get stuck into him about you know he, I mean you listen to him now on the radio and he thinks he used to bat like Ian Botham well, I'm sorry, Jeffrey. You didn't. You know, you were the most boring batsman there's ever been. You know, so I can I can I can get stuck into Jeffrey, um, and I want to hear some straight answers from him, which I will get. I, I will get because there's no hiding place on a stage. You you can't just um you know turn your microphone off or, or walk off. So Jeffrey's going to be like my captive prisoner for uh, an hour and a half. And there'll be an opportunity for people to buy programmes on the night, which will raise money for the PCA Benevolent Fund. So the shows are giving something back to cricket and cricketers, which must be important for you. It is, and anyone who's played cricket professionally knows what a wonderful job the PCA does, um, particularly um, for former cricketers who fall on hard times, of which there are far too many. Um, of families who, who, are, who are struggling after their, their you know, fine professional cricketing father, husband, can't find work anymore. So it, it does a great job. And, and it, I mean, it has it's increased massively since I was playing. I think when I was playing, the PCA consisted of about three people, <laughs> uh, one of which is John Arlott. He was, he was the, 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 uh, the president for a while. Um, but now, I mean, it's, just, it's a proper organisation and, and they need to raise money for, for these cricketers who fall on hard time. So uh, we are pleased to be giving something back, yes. And how are you feeling? Any nerves as the, the shows approach? Yes, because it's, it's, it's out of my comfort zone. I mean, I'm used to you know, a table and a microphone and um, a cricket match. And that's it. And you don't see anybody that you're talking to. It's not like speaking at a dinner or something. You know, you, you, I mean, you do get used to it. And I, I, I do do theatre. Um, but it is a very different thing. You know, you've got this, sort of this black curtain in front of you, haven't you? The, you know, the, the way the light works. Uh, so you can't see anybody. I mean, you can hear them. Um, it's rather odd. You know, there are people out there, aren't there? Um, but I love it. And it's a different thing. You go into a slightly different mode. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I mean, the, but the nice thing about this is going to be people are going to be able to... It's going to be quite interactive. So questions, they can tweet. So I'm going to have my iPad up. So any questions they want for Jeffrey, up it all comes. They can have a chance to ask questions in the second half, which can be a bit lively. Because actually, funnily enough, people who love cricket, you know, supporters, punters, they can get away with asking questions that um, the pros can't. You know, and it's funny what answers you get. I did a Q&A with Alistair Cook the other day, and a great question came up from it's it an obvious one. Who's the most difficult person in your team to, to manage? And I thought, oh, that's quite a good one. I know it's going to be. And he said, actually, he said something completely different to the one that you and I are both thinking of. <laughs> Not necessarily who it was either. But it was a sort of question that, that I would never have asked him. So I'm looking forward to seeing what gets thrown at Jeffrey. Jonathan, thank you so much for your time today. Best of luck with the shows and enjoy the summer. Thank you. Thanks for having him.